Hey guys, Hackexploit here, back again with another video. Just wanted to make a quick, um, you know, little video to sort of explain or to answer the questions that I keep getting uh, frequently within the comments section. And that's uh, in regards to what operating system I use for hacking. Now, this is a question that is sort of directed at me uh, through multiple, uh, through multiple directions, uh, if you will. Uh, one of them is just a direct comment where I get a question saying, "Hey, what operating system do you use?" Uh, for hacking, right? Which is a pretty loaded, uh, vague question. And then secondly, I'll get a comment like this. I'll get a comment saying, hey, what operating system were you using in the video? And then finally, I'll get the comment that I'll most likely get under this video because I'm using Windows and that will be, hey man, uh, you, know, you know, hackers don't use Windows or something, something like that, uh, which is a little bit worrying and concerning because you're trying to put yourself into a box, a box that uh, really isn't conducive to learning. Um, so I'm just going to answer this in multiple ways uh, as I get the, this question, you know, through multiple, uh, through multiple, in multiple forms. Um, so first of all, let me just start off by saying it really doesn't matter what operating system you use for hacking. And I'm going to assume that you mean uh, a dedicated operating system for hacking and uh, I'm a big fan of virtualization. I think through my videos you guys have been able to deduce that, that I like, um, actually like virtualizing most of the operating systems uh, that I use, or whether I'm using Kali, Parrot, Blackbox, or sorry, Backbox or Black Arch. And then of course I've really delved uh, quite deep into Docker and setting up you know pen testing environments with Docker and so when it comes down to setting up environment for pen testing or hacking I you know I typically just use virtual machines and I do this on a multiple or I do this on multiple operating systems now the two types of operating systems that I'm likely to use as a host operating system are going to be Windows and Linux now I use Windows for various uh, different um for various other tasks that really don't involve hacking that much. I do a lot of uh, video editing, as you guys know. I work with uh, graphics and, um, and, and, and and tons of stuff that actually require Windows. And uh, uh, again, mo most of you will say, well, there are open source alternatives to that. You should uh, holistically use Linux for everything you do. And I totally agree. I have tried it before, but uh, you know, to be honest, there's just much better tools to use uh, on Windows when it comes down to video production and then secondly uh the other the other thing is when i'm whenever i'm dealing with other video editors or graphics designers that i actually get to design the thumbnails for the videos they will typically send me these templates uh in the in a photoshop format which as you know can only be installed on windows or mac and not on linux so i have to always switch back to windows and use it uh, for that so i typically will use both uh, depending on what i i need to do ex exactly it varies but i if i'm working on my own projects or i'm doing a bit of um you know uh, if i'm working on projects that require uh, lots of work to be done in regards to using Linux based tools and utilities and of course, you know, just some basic virtualization of operating systems and using Docker. I'll, I'll switch back to Arch. I have multiple hard drives and SSDs where I have all of these operating systems installed. And my, my default setup is, you know, yeah, usually switch over between Windows 10 and uh, Arch Linux. Um, and I'm not saying that like to prove anything, you know, Arch Linux is just, I think, in my opinion, the be the better option for me right now. Um, so I typically switch over between those two, but I just wanted to open up the Google search uh, right over here just to explain or just to demonstrate, you know, why this question is becoming even more popular. So if I search for best operating system for, you can see that number one search result that's recommended by Google is for hacking and then we have programming gaming laptop phones and then at the bottom here we have penetration testing so again if i click at the, at, on the number one link all right it's going to tell me oh well these are the best ones for security hacking and of course google is very vague now you can go through all of these you know great blog posts that outline the differences between operating systems uh the bottom line is most hacking tools are developed uh, are, are developed on Linux and uh, or BSD um, or any Unix based operating system really. Um, so that means that they're mo they're most likely to function better on them. And that, and I totally agree. As I say, uh, if I'm on Windows and I need to use uh, Linux utilities, I typically just virtualize an operating system and it works out just fine for me. Now, I do understand that most of you or some of you may be running in environments where you're really restricted in terms of system resources and you know, virtualization 
isn't an, an option for you because you cannot do you can you cannot virtualize an operating system because you know you're you're essentially limiting or you're using up all your system resources so i totally get that and if, if that's the case then i, I would obviously recommend uh, installing linux and then of course there's a whole question of mac os now i'm just going to be honest here uh, i'm not i'm not really a mac user i you know i use apple products i have an ipad i have an iphone uh, and I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for that, uh, but again, I use them because they work, right? And I, I'm I, I still have my Android devices. I still experiment quite a bit. Uh, and uh, when it comes down to MacBooks and uh, the uh, you know the the computer side of Apple, I really haven't used any of their products. I've used macOS probably once or twice in my life, and I I really didn't like it. And that's my personal opinion. And that doesn't mean it's a you know it's a bad operating system. If you go to any hacking conference today or you watch some of the videos online you'll see that most of the security researchers are using macbooks now that's not the case uh it's not i mean it's not always the case but you'll, you'll typically find that that is the case and uh, again i can't speak for them uh they typically want something that's uh, stable and that can provide them with what they need and they typically will virtualize uh, whatever tools they require and i've seen a lot of security researchers also using windows and uh, what they uh, are utilizing now is the windows subsystem for linux so that's another alternative that you can use i believe it also comes or you also have the ability to use a kali linux now which is great that means you can easily set up kali and uh, you have all your tools uh, and you can access them through uh, through your command line um, on Windows, which is fantastic. As I said, I've I've typically, uh, for personal projects, gone uh, to the other side of things where I work with containers and Docker. And as you know, I actually developed a bug bounty toolkit, which I actually use regularly. And the reason I like Docker is because it's just a much simpler way of virtualizing environments. And in, in this case, we're talking about you know multiple types of environments with different uh, env environment variables and you know they can be set up uh you know to to have the tools that you you require and you can customize them endlessly whereas with kali linux you're pretty much getting a pre-packaged deal which is great i use kali quite a bit and the reason i use it in videos is because i know a lot of you guys use it and i want there to be some uh uh, I, I want us to have a connection that way so that you don't feel totally disconnected from what I'm doing. And I know the barrier to entry is reduced and you, you, you actually can feel like you can get started. And that's the reason I use Kali. As I said, on a day to day basis, I'm pretty much working on a lot of things. But when I do get into hacking or, you know, hack the box, I'll, I'll load up, you know, Arch Linux. And I usually have Black Arch set up uh, the Black Arch repositories, which is great if you do run Arch Linux. I do recommend setting up the Black Arch repositories um, because you can actually install all the tools within the repositories on a on a stock Arch installation. So again, you can go right over here. And if I go to downloads uh, on Black Arch, you can see you have the ISOs, the OVA images, and then you can install it on top of Arch Linux, which is great. I'll probably... Uh, make a video on that and uh, there we are it's really just simple to get started with it and then you can install entire categories of tools uh, or you can install individual tools which is what i do i only install what i need and i can use it and they work out of uh, you know straight out of the box the only thing is uh, some of these tools may be updated and they may break something so you want to you want to actually uh make sure you're okay with that but if you're a beginner and you are running windows you know you, you don't need to install linux from scratch or you don't need to install a linux distribution although that would be a great learning experience for you uh again if you have enough system resources then i recommend virtualizing but if you are learning or uh, if you are learning how to use linux then i i recommend installing linux as your host operating system because it'll teach you a lot about how to get started how to use the the, the terminal how to diagnose your system uh, understanding the file structure stuff like that very very important stuff and that that stuff you can only learn by using linux on a day-to-day -day basis now i've been using linux uh as my host operating system for a very long time uh probably since the time ubuntu was distributing uh, their distribution on on physical disks and they would send it to schools that's typically when i would uh, i actually got started as i mentioned uh, quite a few times in previous videos my first operating system was ubuntu you know which is a bit weird but uh, that's what i got started with and i used it for quite a bit so i i learned you know very early on how to use linux and of course i moved back to windows for various work related uh, reasons 
And these are legitimate reasons. I know a lot of uh, the, you know, the free software advocates are going to get me in the comments saying that most of the software that you use on Windows can also be run on, um, on, uh, on Linux. And uh, they also apply that same argument to gaming with uh, Proton, I believe is what it's called. I haven't been gaming on Linux or gaming at all, really, uh, on my computer. So again, I know that Linux is really growing that way. But um, for me, I typically switch between the two depending on what I'm doing. And of course, I have tried to virtualize Windows, you know, through um, through KVM on Linux and to, to get that to work. And I'm still working on getting that done because I do want to actually get set up a pass through for my GPU and a few other things so that I can use a Linux uh, exclusively and then virtualize Windows and do whatever I need to do within Windows on Windows, which I've, I've done many, many times before. But I just feel it much more convenient to have a Windows installation lying around so that I can actually get started uh, as soon as I need to. Um, that being said, uh, my answer to the question is, if you are a beginner to cybersecurity or InfoSec or you want to get into pen testing and you don't know anything about Linux, I definitely recommend setting up Linux within a virtual machine or installing it uh, physically on your machine as your host operating system and getting to learn how to use it that way. Again, you can use any operating, any Linux distribution. It doesn't matter whether it's Black Arch, whether it's uh, Manjaro, Arch, Ubuntu, uh, there's tons of um, of uh, Linux distributions. Again, you can search for stuff. You can search for um, a site called DistroWatch, and uh, DistroWatch will essentially let, you know give you a list of all the distributions, and it sort of ranks them. Although I wouldn't trust that ranking system. Um, you can see these are the top um, distributions based on page uh, hit ranking. So you have MX Linux, Manjaro, Mint, Pop OS, which is actually getting quite popular. I might try it out, although I'm more of an Arch guy now uh, because of, you know, the fact that I can control my environment. And, uh, you know, you need to get rid of that bloatware. And of course, you have all the rest of them. So again, try it whatever you feel is comfortable for you. If you use macOS, that's perfectly fine. It, no one cares what operating system you use as long as you get the job done. In regards to you know free software advocacy, uh, I'm a free software advocate, but of course, I'm very realistic about things. And uh, if I do require proprietary software to work with others who use proprietary software, then I know I have to do that. I can't start convincing a professional graphics designer to switch over to GIMP simply because I believe in it. So if they use Photoshop and they're working with me, I need to use Photoshop so that I can also you know work with them collaboratively. That doesn't mean I can't, you know, sort of introduce them to the idea of free software, but it's entirely up to them. Um, I, I'm really operating system agnostic. I use whatever I need to use to get the job done. Once the job is done, you know, they're, 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 I really don't have any hard feelings about, uh, or I'm not really focused on being, on being ideological, uh, ideologically consistent in regards to the software that I use. And I know that that seem that may disappoint some of you, but that's just the way I feel. And um, hopefully, I have some um, I have some individuals in the comment section will agree with me. I would love to hear what you guys think. There's tons of things or operating systems or systems that you can use. You have you know you have multiple ways of high, uh, of virtualizing and uh, operating systems. Uh, in terms of your, your penetration testing distributions, you have Black Arch, Parrot OS, Kali Linux, Backbox. There, there's like tons of options now. And then, of course, uh, you have the ability to use Docker to, to sort of virtualize um, any of your Docker images. You have Kali Linux, uh, you have Parrot OS that you can use. So it, it really is ex extensive in regards to the options that you have. Um, so again, it's all about what's comfortable with you. Don't, don't really focus on what others are using, because I think that's... Um, that, 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 that's sort of a, a, a very uh, a very shallow thing to do when you think about it realistically. Decide what's comfortable for you. And of course, I'm not saying don't learn from other people or people who are better than you in regards to their preferences and what they feel is important in an operating system. But again, it's all up to your, uh, it, it's, it, it, it's entirely up to you how you progress because today you could be using Windows. A few years from now, you could be using Mac. Do not be... Uh, do not be rigid in your thinking and say that I'm going to be using Linux for the rest of my life or I'm going to be using Windows for the rest of, of, of my life. Um, so again, it's all about, uh, you know, opening yourself up to different experiences, uh, understanding that operating systems are designed to do uh, on, on, on a very general level to do basic things. And of course, you have specialized uh, operating systems that allow you to do even more, uh, e even more stuff. So it's entirely up to you. 
Uh, so I've kind of been going on quite a bit in this video. I didn't want to, I didn't want it to take that long. Uh, but again, there's tons of options. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace. I just want to take a moment to thank all our Patreons at patreon.com forward slash hackersploit for all the support. Your support and help is truly appreciated. You keep us making a newer and fresher and better content. Um, so I just want to say thank you to all the Patreons. Um, so thank you, Murph the Surf, Daniel Bork, Jonathan Kyle, Adam Mack, Jamal Guillory, Dafim Bari, Jeremy Nikolai, Mary Hara, Max Chow, Dustin Umpress, Michael Hubbard, and Jerry Spets.